Greetings in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Welcome to Moments with Truth, which is a television outreach of the five gospel halls here in Tobago. We sincerely pray that you will be blessed as you view today's program. Amen, amen. Well, bless the Lord. And welcome again to another moment with truth. I am a Bible speaker, Godwin Lee. Trust you're doing well. <clears throat> and today we bring another in the series that we have begun called Let's Talk About Jesus. It's very important that we do so. There are many misconceptions concerning the person and the work of the Lord Jesus. So it's a very important topic to get into. And yeah, I've, I've come across a lot of people that have a lot of varying opinions concerning Jesus. But it's not truth. And we must speak truth concerning the Lord Jesus. So we use this platform to especially promulgate truth concerning Jesus. Now we spoke about him concerning his deity. We've sp spoken about the Lord Jesus concerning his death. Even having done that, I think even what we've done is still insufficient. We have to do a more comprehensive study on the Lord Jesus. So after this uh, series is done on why did Jesus die, we want to get back into a more detailed study dealing with the, um, his you know, things that prove that he is God. We'll look at... Um, his attributes and we look at his actions that speaks to the fact that he is God and we look at the names the appellations that tells us that he is in fact God so it's very important to address these things because some people are not so convinced and it's very important that they do because it is believing these truths it is accepting these truths that warrants a person's salvation. We must believe on the. It's not. It's not just to believe on Jesus. You must believe on the Lord. That is that He is Jehovah. Jesus, Jehovah is salvation. Jehovah came to procure our salvation. Christ. He is the anointed. He is that Shiloh. He is that King of kings and Lord of lords. These truths concerning Jesus must be accepted, must be believed, must be understood. And so we must teach these, teach these truths to the people. So today we are going to get into, last time we looked at did Jesus really die? And we saw from the scripture, well, he said he did. You know, contrary to what others believe. Let God be true and everyone else a liar. Jesus said that he died. He said, I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I'm alive forevermore. That's the Lord Jesus. Well, today we want to look at why did he die? Why did Jesus die? There are about, you know, I can produce for us about 15 reasons why he died. We will not go through all 15 this evening. But as time goes along, we'll try to exhaust those reasons. So let's start to see today and see what the scripture says as to why, why did Jesus die. So Father, we commit this study to you. We, come, we commit this proclamation of truth to you. And we pray, Father, for the filling of your Holy Spirit. And that the truth will reach the target that you intended. Be glorified in this exercise. Save souls to your glory alone. We give you the honor. We give you the glory. We give you the praise. 
in the name of our Lord Jesus. Amen. Now, why did Jesus die? <clears throat> well, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 7 tells us, Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book, it is written of me, this is words speaking to the Lord Jesus, to do thy will, O God. Above when he said, Sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and offering for sin, thou wouldest not, neither hadst pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Every priest stands daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sin. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God from henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering he has perfected forever them that are sanctified. Why did Jesus die? Well, according to what we read here in Hebrews, among other things, he died to do the will of God. Why did Jesus die? He died to fulfill the will of God. <clears throat> it was God's will that the Lord Jesus should come and, well, there were offerings and sacrifices in the Old Testament. And with those, the Bible tells us that God, the Father, was never satisfied with those things. The, 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 the God of the Bible is the triune God. He is that Elohim. It's a, it's a Hebrew plural word. And the fact that it ends, the Hebrew of it ends with I am. Actually, the Hebrew plural ends with I am, not S. And sadly, some of the translators have in some places put an S at the end of cherubim. It is not supposed to be that way. It is supposed to be cherubim, plural, cherub, singular. So the Elohim speaks to the plurality of God. So the Father, the first person of the Trinity, was never pleased with the sacrifices of bulls and goats. <clears throat> never was. The reason being, <clears throat> the sacrificial animals of old, well, they were unwilling. You know, when you, have, when you, when you took those sacrifices, you had the, the psalmist said, bind the sacrifices with cords, even unto the horns of the altar. So they had to tie down these sacrifices. And of course, the, 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 the poor goatee or the poor sheep, the cow, the whatever, they were not willing to be there. And so they had to bind them. That was not the case with Jesus. You know, here it is the Father wants a willing sacrifice. The animals of old were unwilling. Here comes Jesus. In the volume of the book, it is written of me, I delight to do thy will, O my God. That's what God wants. That's what he wants from us as well. Those of us who are believers in the Lord Jesus, who follow him, nothing must be done involuntarily. Nothing must be done forced. You know, he desires that we, we, we perform our duties to him willingly, voluntarily. You know, and this is what he, he is indeed um, happy with. So concerning Jesus, we read in the scripture, he being in the very form of God, didn't think it robbery to be equal with God. He made himself of no reputation, took upon himself the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. He willingly did that. The verses started by saying he being in the form of God. Well, Jesus is part of the Godhead. He is God. He being in the form of God didn't think it robbery to be equal with God, to hold on to the position there in heaven. You know, unwilling to release it to come down here to become a man to die for us. No, that wasn't a problem. He would he would gladly empty himself 
and come down here to, uh, to be a man to die in our room and in our stead. That's what he did. So it is this willingness that the Father is looking for. And it is this willingness that, you know, that Jesus came and did. It was his delight to do the will of God. So the Old Testament sacrifices, well, they were unwilling, of course. <clears throat> also, the Old Testament sacrificial animals, their blood only covered sin and only for a time. God isn't pleased with that. He wants a sacrifice that will not cover sin. It must cleanse. He wants a sacrifice that will not cleanse only for a year, annually. It must cleanse once and for all. Well, that's Jesus. That's Jesus. He came to perform the Father's will. The Father's will is that he should have a willing, innocent victim who the sacrifice, the bloodshed, will cleanse sin even to the conscience and not for time, but for all eternity. That's the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus. And we are glad, you know, we are glad that he came and performed that task. <clears throat> performing the Father's will. Praise God. And by his blood, those who come to him through faith in him, they, we have our sins cleansed. The covenant promise is this. I will be merciful to their unrighteousness. And their sin and iniquity I will remember no more. And there's awesome power in the forgiveness of God because it cleanses even to the conscience. Even a person would have been involved in some of the most reprehensible sins when they've come to Jesus for cleansing. Those sins no longer are heavy on the mind. You understand? The conscience as well is purged. Praise God. You know, and you know, it is great delight in, in having sins forgiven and iniquities pardoned. Yes, Jesus came to do. Why did he die? He came to perform the Father's will. The Father wanted a sacrifice that is willing a sacrifice that is efficacious, a sacrifice that is permanent. The Old Testament sacrifices could not do that. Well, up comes Jesus, and he did just that. So, here it is. Why did he die? Well, he died to perform the Father's will. What else? Well, the second reason why Jesus died... <clears throat> We find in Matthew chapter 9, verse 13, the Bible says, But go you and learn what that means. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. For I am come not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Also in Luke 19, 10, he said to Zacchaeus, The son of man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. This is a faithful saying, 1 Timothy 1, verse 15. And worthy of all acceptation. That Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. So well, what do we have? We also, you know, we have, we have from these verses that we read, it mentions sinners. <clears throat> I'm not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. We also have from the verses we read, the lost the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. We also have in the verses that we mentioned to save. Praise God. So he came to save sinners. Well, sinners lost to save. Why did he come? Sinners lost to save. Who exactly are these sinners? <clears throat> well, the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 3, verse 12. They are all, underline all. It will shock you to know that all means all. It means you. It means me. All. They have all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none, underline the word, none. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Their throat is an open sepulchre. The verse is going to describe sinners. The throat is an open sepulchre. What does that mean? Well, the kind of thing, when you open a grave, I remember doing a, doing a funeral one time, and boy, apparently they dug up a grave that was still green. <laughs> and so when they dug this grave up, 
the smell is something that you cannot even begin to describe. <clears throat> that's an open sepulchre. That's an open grave. And you know, the Bible is saying concerning sinners, their throat is an open sepulchre. has to do with the kind of vile language that comes from the mouth, even in some cases of very small children. <laughs> their, their throat is an open sepulchre. With their tongues, they have used deceit, all sorts of fraud and lies and, the, and you know, the rest of it. Poison of asp is under their lips. They'll destroy you by their words. Whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness needs no explanation. Their feet are swift to shed blood. We have seen it all around in our country today. The bloodshed and the bloodletting is phenomenal. And that's, you know, that is, the, that, is what, that is what characterizes sinners. And especially in these last days when the Bible tells us in the last days perilous or dangerous times will come. So we've had some slayings, you know, as really is troubling. But it all is indicative that we are in fact in the last days. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Young men who are hasty to squeeze. You know, there's no pausing. They'll shoot you. Without the, you know, with, you know, that's what's happening in these last days. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. That's what characterizes people in these last days. These are the sinners. They'll pull up in front of a church play some of the most vile music that you can even you know, imagine in, with their loudspeakers in their cars in front of a church, play some of the vilest kind of music, will stand up in front of a church, smoke marijuana, drink beer, and the rest of it, curse loudly. There is no fear of God before their eyes. These are the sinners. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now, I don't know if you, if you heard your name in that list there. There are other lists in the Bible that speaks to those who are sinners, who practice sin. And I don't know if your name popped up in this list here, but it, 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 is, good, it is good news because we are, we are learning. Well, why did Jesus die? He died to save sinners. So even if sadly your name appears here among the things that we read about just now, you know, take heart because you are exactly the person that Jesus came to save. He didn't come to call the righteous. Some are self-righteous. Some tell themselves, well, we are good. Well, no. The Bible says there's none good. And you are exactly the person that he came to save. So sinners, it also mentions about the lost. Verse 6 of... Um, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have, we have strayed. All, all of us like sheep have strayed away. We have, left God, we have left God's path to follow our own. Some may be familiar with the old King James. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. That's the lost. Well, he came to seek and to save that which was lost. Right? He came to save sinners. He came to save the lost. What, what, what characterizes the lost in this verse? Who are the lost? All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. We have turned from God's way. The lost are those who have turned from God's way and are following their own way. The lost are those who have turned from God's way and are following their own way. The lost are they that are like Cain. God had appointed a way to approach him. Cain went and did his own thing. Cain is the birth of religion. Religion does its own thing in an attempt to get to God and does not follow God's way. So if you are in any kind of religious circle and you know, you're not following the prescribed way that God has given in the scripture, you have gone your own way as well. You may ask, well, what is God's way? Well, it's very important that you know. Here comes Jesus. He said, I am the way. See it? What is God's way? Well, the better question really is, who is God's way? And God's way is Jesus. The way to get to God is through 
Jesus Christ, typified in the Old Testament by the sacrificial animals. God's way is through Jesus. God's way is through sacrifice. God's, God's way is through atoning blood. You know, and well, sadly, there are many who has, have their various religions, and for some, in some of these religions, there's no blood. No blood was shed, but the Bible tells us without the shedding of blood, there's no remission for sins. How could your sins be remitted if there's no blood? And not just any blood, it must be noble blood that flows, it must be noble blood that flows from noble veins. Richer blood that flows from noble veins. Having the power to cleanse the soul from guilt, to purge the soul from guilt and cleanse the reddest stain. So not just any blood, it has to be the blood of Jesus Christ, God's son. If your, relig relig your religion does not furnish that, I, I respectfully tell you, you are lost, you see, and the lost are on their way to hell. And here's Jesus trying to tell you, listen, I am the way. I am the way. Well, the Bible tells us there are many, the, the, the Bible tells us there's a way that seems right unto a man. I stood up about two days ago, toe to toe with a Muslim man. He's trying to convince me that Jesus cannot be God. And of course, there are other you know, issues that they are facing in that particular religion. You know, and, and so there are many like that who are convinced that, well, their way is the right way. We must caution you to tell you, if your way does not have a blood sacrifice, if the blood sacrifice was not done by God's son, the son, if in your religion there is no son, you see it? If in your religion there isn't even a son, if in your religion there's no death, no one died, no one shed their blood, no one rose again. You are on, you are lost. You are, you, are, you are going the wrong way. You see it? That is not God's way. That's your own way. And your own way is going to lead, lead you to destruction. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. The Bible cautions you. Let the sinner, let the wicked man forsake his ways and the sinner his thoughts. That's what you are thinking, that that is the right way. You are wrong. So God is saying to you, look, let, this, let the wicked man forsake his way. You must come God's way. God's way is Jesus. So he came to save the lost. And here it is, he's calling you and trying to tell you, listen, you are lost. And I can get you onto the right way. There's only one way. The way is Jesus. You know, and this is the right way. And I'm trusting that you would come to him and experience salvation for having having come God's way other than that you are still lost so he came to, to save the sinners thank God he came to save the lost so he is the savior the Bible says concerning Jesus unto us is born this day in the city of David a savior which is Christ the Lord now, you know, we speak about salvation and savior and being saved. And some people ask, well, what, is it, what do you really mean about being saved? You know, what do I need to be saved from? Well, it is, it is, well, it is people that are in danger that needs to be saved. <clears throat> Those, that tragic incident we had a couple of weeks ago where four men died in that pipe under the sea see it there they are they're sucked in and they are in danger of perishing they need someone to come and rescue them they are in a position where they cannot rescue themselves that's the person that needs to be saved you are in a place of danger there's mortality if it if you do not escape and you cannot by yourself save yourself you need someone to come and rescue you well that's the person that needs to be saved and that's your predicament Without Jesus Christ, you are lost, you are a sinner, and the wages of sin is eternal separation from God in a burning hell. You are in danger. You are sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. You are like in a burning house. A person that is trapped in a burning house needs need someone to come and rescue them. You are not trapped in a burning house. You'll be trapped in a lake of fire, the Bible tells us. Whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. That's the danger you are in. That's why you need to be saved. 
But thank God this evening there is a savior. You see? And neither is there salvation in any other. Don't trust anyone or anything or any system to save you. The only savior that God has provided is Jesus Christ. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is no other name under heaven given amongst men whereby we must be saved. And I dare say as well that the gender of this Savior is masculine. It is a man that God has sent to save us. Not a woman. You see it? For there is one God and one mediator between God and man. The man Christ Jesus. You see? The second person that came down and put on humanity became a man. So the gender to save us is a man. And thank God this man, his name is Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. If you are trusting in anything else, you are going the wrong way. Are you hearing me? So why did he come? He came to seek and to save that which was lost. Hell will be a place of incredible lostness. The Bible tells us there'll be weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. And thank God that the first reason we explain why did Jesus die? He came to do the will of the Father. Well, apart from you know, apart from the will of the Father being that Jesus should take the sinner's place, should become our substitute, the just one coming to die for us, the unjust that he might bring us to God. Another thing that is the will of the Father is this. His will is that all men should be saved. His will that Jesus, was that Jesus, Jesus, Jesus should come. His will is that you should be saved. Listen, a pers the person who goes to hell, listen to me carefully, the person who ends up in hell is entirely out of the will of God. Let me say that again. If and when a person finds themselves in hell, they are there entirely out of the will of God. God is not willing that any should perish. I should dare say as well, God has never sent anybody to hell. <clears throat> Decisions determine destiny. Mark it down. Decisions determine destiny. It is based upon your decision. Here it is, God has provided a savior. And depending upon what you decide to do with this salvation, this savior, accept or reject, it is your decision. And your decision is going to decide your destiny. Heaven or hell. Saved or lost. You see it? So it is up to you. Here it is. Why did Jesus die? He died to, to, to do the will of the Father. All right? He died to save sinners. And he's offering you salvation. Will you take it? Will you take it? Remember, decision decides destiny. And you have to make a decision, not tomorrow, not next week. The time for you to make a decision is now. God's time is always now. You will either be saved on God's time, or it is likely you will never be saved at all. Now is the acceptable time. The Bible says, acquaint now, thy, acquaint now thyself with thy creator and be at peace. You have a decision to make and perhaps, you know, this broadcast is reaching someone who God has been speaking to for some time. And you're delaying. It is dangerous to delay. The Bible says, he that has been often reproved, warned by God and hardens his neck shall suddenly be destroyed. And that without remedy. This is very serious business. And if God is speaking to you and pulling upon your heart by his Holy Spirit and inviting you to come to Jesus, I will, I will advise you, take that now. Take that salvation today while you have time. Now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. We stop here and then we continue with, uh, with some other reasons why Jesus died. Father, we pray that you bless your word and bless someone that will come to faith in the Lord Jesus before it is too late. My number is 473-0221. You can call me if you have a question. You want to, you know, some further help. We are here. We are available for you. There are other questions you'll see on the screen as well. 473 is other numbers you'll see on the screen as well. 473-0221. We are here to help you. God bless you until we meet for another moment with truth.
God bless you. Thank you for viewing today's program. We invite you to contact us at any of the media advertised or visit us at any of the meetings that appear on the screen. Dear friends, remember that Jesus saves, he keeps, and he satisfies. May God bless you.